Yum, yum! Hey everybody, uh, just a quick video here that I wanted to uh, to put out. Mark Tomlinson in the forums had uh, a question about creating a simple rig where if you moved a foot on a character or um, on a rig that it would make the leg follow the foot and then also make the body go up and down so that the uh, hip stays in the same location. All right, so now there are going to be a number of different ways to do this and are probably more efficient ways, but um, this is just what I came up with very quickly and uh, I thought that this might be of benefit to some other people as well because there are a few issues uh, in the setup here that are fairly common with general uh, rigging and constraints. Um, so I just thought that I'd put together a quick video here and um, and just kind of go through the, the the general walkthrough of this whole setup. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is actually build up my um, my system of locators because that's going to allow me to uh, have everything in place and make sure it's working. And then I can parent my uh, geometry to it. In this case, I'm just going to build some simple geometry like in that last one. Um, so let's go ahead and start by putting a locator down here. And this is going to be our foot. So this is going to be the base and this is going to be what we actually move around. So let's uh, make this a foot. I'm going to give it a custom shape, which we'll make. Um, let's just do a circle on the Y and we'll make it um, not solid. So that gives us something good to grab onto. And this is going to be kind of what will drive the uh, the rotation of the leg and also the movement of the body. All right. So then let's go ahead and make a second one. And this is going to be the ankle. And the ankle uh, will be position constrained to the foot so that it moves along with it, but then it's going to be con uh, direction constrained to another locator, which we'll make here right now. And here, let's make this one. Uh, I'm also going to give it another shape. And I want to see the direction that this is facing. So I'm going to make this a rhombus also on the Y. And let's go with like 0.2 so it's fairly small. Okay, there you go. So there's that. Now, the next thing that we'll need here is going to be a constraint, a direction constraint for the actual um, for the actual piece here. So I'm going to put this in here. And just for numbers wise, I'm going to put it right at one meter. That's just going to make life a little easier. Um, now, if you already have geometry existing, uh, what you could do is find something. So if you have like a circular joint uh, that this is going to be stuck to, you could uh, set your work plane to the location of that and then snap this locator to the uh, to the work plane position. Uh, in this case, I don't have the geometry. I'm just going to build the geometry around it. But uh, the end result will be the same. Uh, so again here, I'm going to give this a custom shape just so I can keep everything clean. We'll make that a circle. I think on the Z is fine, uh, except we'll make this one smaller, maybe 150 millimeters, pretty small. Okay, there you go. So uh, this one actually isn't even going to be something we control or do anything with. It's just going to be there for um, our targeting, uh, basically, of the leg. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And uh, then I will need one more piece. And this is going to be a locator that will uh, control the parenting of uh, the leg and also of the body with constraints. Um, but it's going to be attached to um, the... Uh, the ankle joint here. So let's start by getting the ankle and the foot and we want to set up a position constraint. All right. So now if I take the foot and move it, see the ankle goes with it. Great. Um, but then I also want to take the ankle and the ankle, um, which I haven't named here. Let's go ahead and name that. This is our ankle um, direction. Okay. So I'm going to take this and the ankle is and then the ankle direction and do a constraint and that works okay although you can see that the uh, the ankle is rotated um, so it's facing this way that's okay it's not a big deal um, but we will notice if we take and move this you can see that this is now uh, pointing in that direction now what I could do here now that this is set up since it's not quite uh, going in the right direction I could change my um, rhombus to uh, facing down the Z, which is going to point it at that. But, you know, this is merely just aesthetics. Uh, just gives you an idea of where the rig is actually pointing. All right, so uh, that's all of our simple pieces. And we just need one more piece here uh, that is going to be a locator. And this is going to be our hip, um, shoulder, whatever you want to call it here. Um, and this is going to be parented to the ankle. And then we need to take it and offset it uh, one meter. In this case, it's going to be in the Z, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. 
if I can get to one meter. There we go. Um, and once this is set, I'm actually going to go ahead and zero the position on it. Um, and that will help with my parenting here in a moment so that it's a little bit easier to work with. So this is another one here. Um, and I'm just going to make this one a... Uh, let's go with another circle, but I'll make this one smaller. Maybe 0.1. There you go. So you, know, you could set this up as complex as you want to, uh, but that's that's going to be fine. So now what I'm going to do is create just one more locator, and this is going to be our our locator for the whole leg. And this is what will allow us to move the whole uh, thing around. So I'm going to create a leg, and then I'm going to get everything here and just drag and drop it into the leg. So now I have this. If I want to move it around, I can, and we're all set. Okay, so now let's hop back over to the modeler real quick here and we're going to uh, just set up some very simple geometry so I'm going to start with a foot here which I'll just drag out um, I'm not going to be super precise on any of this I just want to get something that is functional so I'll do something like that and then let's just taper it a little bit just for giggles um, yeah something like that and then I'm going to get a new mesh here and we're going to make another rectangle that I will just put in here like this. And I want to make sure that it's kind of centered in the foot. That way we won't get any weird overlapping or anything like that. Um, and let's see, I want this to essentially line up with the, uh, the center here. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit above because if I round it, that way it will line up with the rounding. Um, and that'll be, you know, a little bit more fun, right? So uh, then what I'll do here is I'll go in and I'm going to take this edge and this edge and just do a quick bevel on them. So this isn't super lazy. It has a little bit of something going on here. And then I'm just going to move it down so that the center line of that is lined up with the, um, the one meter line there so that uh, now this will actually rotate correctly. All right, uh, so now I can just parent these pieces together. So in item mode, if I just take the foot and drag and drop it onto this foot, I'm going to choose parent in place so that it is in the right position. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the leg, except I'm going to attach this and parent and place it to the, uh, the hip joint. All right, so nothing moved there, which is fine because we don't want anything to move yet. But you can see now that this actually moves and it keeps everything pointed in the right direction. Great, so now just our last little bit here. Let's go ahead and get a cylinder. Uh, we're going to make a new mesh item. And I'm going to drag out just this little cylinder here. And let's just pull this down there. Like that about. Um, and it's not going to really matter where this is location-wise because I'm going to zero it out. Um, all I care is that it's uh, even and it's centered up on the X and the Z. Um, I don't really care about the Y. Uh, but now I'm just going to take this whole thing here, uh, this mesh, and yeah, that'll work. Um, so what I'll do is grab the whole leg. And I'm just going to slide this over so that it lines up the, uh, the leg with the, the side of the body there. And then I'll select this piece here. And what I'm going to do is I don't want to parent this, so I'm just going to select uh, my hip joint here. And then we'll go back over to our Setup tab and do a position constraint. And it's still going to jump up uh, and over to the side. But the horizontal movement we really don't care about. The reason that it has vertical uh, movement is because my mesh wasn't centered there. So if we just do that and undo it one more time, and this is what I mean how there are some things that you have to worry about um, when you're setting up something like this. Um, since I built this off center, um, what I'll need to do here is um, just center up um, this object so it fits in there. So I'll just go edit, um, center to bounding box. And, oh, sorry, I have to have it unselected. Center to bounding box, center. Helps if I have the right object selected. <laughs> center to bounding box, center. And then we'll go also pivot uh, to center there too. So now if I take this and this, and create a position constraint. You can see it snaps to the middle, but doesn't snap up and down anymore. Um, so what I need to do here to actually get this uh, to work right, and I was going to have to do this anyway, is uh, take my position constraint and change some of the output options. You can see that right here on the position constraint under add output options. And this lets you control how much of 
uh, the motion will be tied in here. And I don't want any Z motion tied to this. I just want that to be right there. Um, if I turn off X motion, it will work until it starts to pull the leg forward here. And I'll show you. So if I pull this forward, see it, it works at first and it pulls it up and down a bit. But as I get too far forward, you can see it starts to separate uh, kind of the hip joint from the, the rest of the body there. So I don't want to do that. What I do want to do is go to my position constraint. And then if you um, have edited those output options um, and you need to get back to them, they're actually underneath inside of the, the position constraint, this matrix channel effect uh, and I'm just going to put 100% on the X as well so now if I take this whole thing I can move this around and it's going to move properly that way if you just need to move something forward a little bit you can do that and you're all set now you could also some other options you could also tie in uh, something like rotation so if I wanted to take you know this guy you can see that it rotates um, when we move here so if I take this and this and I do a rotation constraint all right, what I can do is, let's go to the rotation constraint, and all I want this to do is uh, rotate on the Z axis. So I'm gonna zero out um, X and Y, all right? And now if I take this and pull it forward, you'll see that it tilts. But if that's a little bit too strong, you see it actually is always positive, which is kind of cool, a little R2-D2 action there. Um, but if that's too strong for you, you don't want it to exactly follow the leg, but kind of follow it a little bit, you can do a partial um, uh, constraint here. So let's just turn this down to maybe 50%. And now if we take and move the body, you see that the body rotates a little, but it's not overly done. It's just a little bit of motion on the rotation. And I could turn that down probably even more, maybe 25% or something. So you get a little bit of tilt, but not too much. So um, hope this is helpful to uh, to some of you out there. Um, let me know in the comments if, uh, if you'd like to see anything more complicated in this uh, vein of stuff. Um, but I guess that does it for this one. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Yum, yum!